Hello, and welcome to another Let's Play. Me, Game of Six, Don Course. Before we start, if you're interested in playing this game, you can get it for free on itch.io, but if you want to support the people that make this game, and or get the newest version earlier, you can go to Patreon, which is $3 a month. So, on the last Let's Play, it was basically kind of the same as the previous one, where there was a confrontation between... The main character Arvo, who we call Dark, and Miko, but this time from Miko's perspective. And now, I guess we're back here. Time travel. How's my face before we start? I can say I'm a little emotionally drained, like something happened today with work, I guess. And I'm like, hey, uh, can you get back to me? But also it's like, oh, this game's dredging up emotions and memories that I don't like to feel. Anyways, the good moments I've had with Miko, they were the best moments of my life. No, despite the pain, even if nothing could work out between us, I don't regret falling in love with him. But why? Why can't I find the words inside me to say, to say to him now? Because I don't know what I'm really feeling, now at least. I couldn't bear to hurt him again. And how can I now? So soon after he united. It's all too much. There are too many feelings in me. I don't want to rush into anything. Birds circle around their forest. Their calls piercing through the darkness. Who could they be calling out at this hour? Or calling to? I wonder, is this... Is the time linear for them? Or do they count the years and summers? I stopped in my tracks. Something wrestles in the dense forest ahead of me. Could this be? Rune? He looks almost panicked and stops too, seeing me. There's something unusual about him. A hint of madness in his eyes? A hint of madness in his eyes. Hey, is everything alright? But he bolts sideways, running off into the forest. Huh. What was that about? Why did I startle him so much? I hope I'm not... That hideous in the dark. I could follow him w by his paw steps, but he didn't seem to want to be followed. Besides, I don't feel like talking to anyone. Then, I noticed something weird. Through the trees, in the direction Rune ran off to, the moon shies, best shines, its surface flickering. I blinked twice, but the flickering doesn't go away. Lamp shimmering gently, but clearly. Oh, is this going to be like it's going to turn out to be Echo? Because, like, both Miko and Rune were talking about how the moon was flickering. Must be because I'm looking at the moon through the trees. Or maybe it's the heat from some source? Hot air rising and rippling? My steps lead me back to the guest house. There are a lot of people on the terrace, and I'd rather avoid them. So I start circling the building towards the rim to the main entrance. But walking along the sauna window, I changed my plans and opened the small door to the sauna corridor instead. A rush of warm air filled with heavy smell of chlorine. It feels good, massaging the tense up folds in my brain, making me smooth. My paws are completely frozen. I barely noticed that outside, but now the cold feels biting. Hell, so empty. There's no one in the locker room, thankfully, but some of the lockers are closed. I still hope they're all in the swimming pool. And just quickly, and put myself in one of the open lockers. I put my stuff, not bothering to close it, and grab the towel from the stack of, at the entrance to the sauna. Miko isn't here, as I thought. But there's a lone figure sitting at the glazed wall, looking outside, towel wrapped around his waist instead of lying flat on the bench. Coach Devon. He either doesn't register me, or at least doesn't acknowledge, does nothing to acknowledge my presence, as I sit down on the opposite side of the middle bench, on the same side as him. That is fine with me, though. I wanted to be alone. Outside, 
The moon still flickers, heat from the coals rising and dispersing around us. I open up my lungs, taking in the fiery hot air slowly with deep breaths. <clears throat> As I lean back on the wooden bench and relax, my nose picks up the faint scent of alcohol, and along with it, one other I didn't expect here, arousal. I glance in Coach's direction. He's sitting motionless, snout turned away from me, but the scent definitely comes from him. Most wouldn't notice, but feeling noses are especially sensitive. Are they? Like, I wonder what's the ranking of smell, ranking of being able to smell by animals. I thought dogs were, but I don't know. He turns towards me, but then drops his gaze, as if reading my thoughts. Judging by his reaction, I'm not the reason for the arousal, though, which is a relief. <laughs> oh, you don't want that big, sexy leopard? I mean, you are sad, though. I don't want us both to feel awkward for the next few minutes until one of us leaves, so I speak up. Hey, uh, sir, why are you drunk and horny? So, how'd you like the film? The film? Oh, the film. I didn't check what it was beforehand because Rune recommended it to me. I had no idea it would be this abstract. It wasn't bad. I don't think anybody left. I really enjoyed it myself. I don't know. It wasn't easy to watch, and certainly wasn't the light entertainment I hoped it would be. I need to rethink my faith in his recommendations. I exhale and lean back, the heat slowly getting to me, knots and tying, ooh woo. Today's weird. Oh, tell me about it. Coach blurts out before composing himself and looking at me curiously. Something happened? Not really, but everyone seems troubled today for some reason. Huh, really? What's been going on? Just personal troubles. It's... I stop and sigh. Feelings from my conversation with Miko suddenly hitting me at once. As if my subconsciousness wore them off until now, keeping me disassociated. Until finally, it all feels real. Coach... Why is love so complicated? I could you ask you the same thing. So I wonder who he's talking about. Like, is he? I like I know like there's a canonical uh, sub, not really something, but like another version like Broken Harbors, which you can get at five dollars on Patreon. Ooh, ooh, where um, it's about Rune and Devon, and they do the dirty. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, at some point I'll check that out, but as not for reading, because out loud, because reading out loud is a lot. And I might just do that as a, um, kind of like I did the shelter and uh, Ad Astra where I read it, but I don't actually read out loud. Though I wonder what Rune was being all scared about. Anyways. No, I'm definitely not the best person to ask. I've never seen that face before. None of my relationships lasted, and I blew it to myself with the only serious partner I ever had. There's definitely something weird going on today. I never thought I'd see Coach Devon's soft side. It clashes with my perception of him as a stern teacher, so much that I don't know how to recognize the, per uh, the two in one person. Sorry to hear. No, I am sorry. It's been a long day, and I guess I miss some company. I thought I'd come here with Rune, but I haven't seen him since we came back from town. So what did Rune do? Or is he just emotionally distraught and he's running? Like, he might have done nothing. Like, I was thinking maybe he might have broken something and he's like, I'm gonna get out of here, but it's like... I don't know. Oh, I seen him just a few minutes ago in the forest. He was running somewhere. He didn't seem he like he wanted to talk. Huh. Weird. Maybe he needs some place to think. That wouldn't be unlike him. So, do you want to tell me about what's troubling you? I could trust him. I know that. But I don't really feel like sharing it yet. With anyone. If anything, 
If there's anything I want, I want to sleep and forget about it for a moment, at least. I still have a few minutes here, though. I entered, maybe five minutes ago, barely. If I'm already here, I may as well use the time. Have you seen the moon today? Yeah, it's a full moon. Bright enough that I could see it all the way from town, when the clouds are clearing up. It's still pretty cloudy. cloudy. Out for a clearer sky. It's nice to lie down and stargaze for a while. I haven't done it for so long that I had to come here and take part in a lesson to remember that something I can do. Works much better than in the city, though. I love it so much. When I gaze at the stars for a while, I meant the stars, I was like, eh, I mean, the moon's easy to see, even the city. Anyways, the perspective changes. I become infinitesimally small, insignificant, almost in this fast, fo this fast world. I wish I could stay in that, stay in that state longer. Not all the time, maybe, but more often. Aware of how little our troubles are, of how little time we have, full of love for everyone. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. The words are just flowing out to me in a stream of consciousness. But the everyday always pulls us back in, doesn't it? I get what you mean. But the cloudy sky can be just as great can be just as great to look at. Cloudy sky in the sea, almost. Almost changing, never the same, immense and vast, but also eph ephemeral. Clouded sky is like the oh clouded sky is like the sea. You can see so much in there, but all of it will be the reflection of your own mind. Cloud skies like the sea almost, never twice the same. Like your days spent in that sky, each different. As above, so below. The sky is in constant flux, and so is everything. We can't chase the days past. We can't live the same day twice. And we're the same, slowly, gradually, we change until we're barely recognizable. From our sunrise to our sunset, our lives take on different hues, shapes emerging and disappearing from the foggy mass of our minds. What are our lives but a canvas, painted by everything we experience? Experience? Though that's initial spark, our genetic seed, our element of divinity, we grab the brush and start painting. It's easy to forget. Uh, get lost in the clouds. Are you sure you should be a coach? You don't. Didn't you think of teaching literature? Didn't think you. Didn't you think of teaching literature or something? It's always good at. No, I was always good at sports, and I like what I'm doing. I nod, having nothing to add, but a lot to think about. But then, as coach seemed like he was ready to get up, a question pops into my head. Can I ask you something, coach? You can call me Devin. We're not at university, and it's making me feel awfully old when you call me coach. And sure, go ahead. Are you and Rune a thing, or are you just friends? Uh-huh. Do you mean... No, we're friends. I mean, maybe now you're friends. Do you feel something for him? ask with hope in my voice. I guess I'd like not to feel alone with my feelings, but I have someone who d but to have somebody to share them with. Just friendship. Sorry, I just thought, well, you seem pretty close. Not that close, no. Frankly, I probably think of him more of a friend than he thinks of me. I don't really understand him half the time. I see. I wonder if he could hear the disappointment in my voice. I'd even like that. I'd even like that, in a way. If I looked outside, I know the forest would look just the same as yesterday, shrouded in darkness, but in my mind, all these trees are on fire, paint the sky bloody red, smoke bellowing. Oh no, wait, that's actually a fire. Anyways, it's time for me to go, before I melt. See you later. See ya.
I gotta go too, but I'd rather wait until coach. Uh, Devin dresses up and go back into my things into an empty locker room. For now, I can sit around and imagine the great fire licking at the sky, forest burning. Ah, oh, poor Rune. Poor Mik poor everyone. Miko's room. Should I knock on the door? I want to. I want to see him. But what did I tell him? That everything will be alright? I don't know that myself. I don't have anything to tell him. I wouldn't just when I would just like to feel his presence and know that he isn't mad at me. Which he surely is. Knock. I knock and take a step back. Five seconds pass. Then ten. Half a minute. No answer. Also, it's weird. He was in his mu room making music, but now he's not making music. It's quiet. Nothing left but for me to continue to my room. I glance at Bjorn's door, too, as I pass it. I hope he's doing alright. I really don't have the mental strength to knock and check up on him. I don't want to see my I don't want him to see my defeated face and recount to him our conversation. No, better just go to my room and go to sleep. The bedding is warm and the mattress is comfortable. Everything around me still, and my thoughts feel oddly calm too. Maybe because now I understand. I saw the past through a distorted lens, looking from my perspective only. I'm grateful for everything I got, every moment I spent with him. Even if I think I'd like to use that time better. Could we? Really? I held him close to my arms already. Now, I need to find that place in myself again. And hope that well, he'll still accept me when I'm ready. The future still lies open before us. Nothing is decided. But... I need to be sure, or I'll end up hurting him again, maybe even worse than the last time. This is the lesson I learned. I can't think of myself only. And the past? The past, it, the past it fixed and unchanging. I saw it for what I hoped it was. I cast myself in a better light than I ever served. Indulging in nostalgia like a poison coursing through my veins, gliding my brain, reaching to the deepest corner of my beings, pulsating in my fingertips. I thought Miko remembered our time together just as fondly, but can I know that really? But the past is so far away, almost beyond the horizon, and so are the past us. I see us through a dense fog. I can't be sure what happened, and I'll never know what Miko felt. Everything emerges in the night, or with the night. But as my eyes close, the scenes from my adolescence come back to me, as they really were. Uh, sad woos. Oh no, I should have rolled back. Yeah, but yeah, I do be like that sometimes. Skip. Oh, I've never seen that one before. Oh, he's blowing a whistle. Now let's see, what we have a time, so what happens if we don't knock? Especially... Don't open it. It's enough for you to continue. Let's move and pass it. I hope he's doing right, really. Mental. Yeah. Okay. Roll back. Yep. Roll back. Because I want to at least try. Yeah. Damn. Third time's a charm.
at we'll get it at one of these points but yeah end of this to play and now it does kind of like leave me to the thought of what am I going to do now because let me just get to that thing Boop again. Because it's like, okay. Boop. Boop. So, what we've done so far. Oops. Can you hear me? Okay, cool. I accidentally pulled on my thing. So the question is, what am I going to do now? Because we, I did Miko's route to do all of Miko's day, and I did runes and lakes, but apparently they're not completely finished. And then, let me just bring up uh, Don Koos's thing. And minimize that so I can see the other things. Let's see. Okay, Torfs is upcoming. Devon is... Devon is partly done, I guess. Miku is completely done. Lake and Jorgen is partially done. And Bjorn's partially done. I think. Is Torus partially done? Okay, yeah, so it's like... Okay, am I going to go through everybody's day and partially do it? Because that's like... That's Devon that I haven't done. Jorgen that I haven't done. And Bjorn. So that's three. Though, if it's anything like the other stuff, it's probably just like... Ooh. Let's... Two or three Let's Plays? I mean, yeah. But then it would be going back to their thing. And I don't know. I would like to see the two new uh, sit gallery things. There is this new one here, which them smooching. Which I do like better than the old one. I don't I don't hate saying things that might make, you know, artists be like, oh, they don't like this one as much. But it's like, this one makes them look younger and stuff, you know? Than the old one where he seemed to have glasses and seemed to be a bit chubbier. There's also two others later on that I haven't, uh, illustrations that I haven't gotten because they uh, update the game. And I think these are in order, so it's like here's runes, and then here's lakes and stuff like that. And I think it's like maybe one for Jorgen and one for Devin. I mean, I guess I could turn this off just in case so I don't have to censor anything. Boop. Okay, no nakies. Okay, there is one for Devon, and then one for Bjorn, I think. Because I think they put them in order. Yeah. Unless they somehow miss a thing. Which you can. Uh, put it back on. But, yeah. End of this Let's Play. And, I don't know. We're just going to have to figure it out. Because I've done... Let's see. Four Dong Choruses today, which is a month... I have um, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, so about six and a half months of Dawn Chorus to post. Yeah, I like to do these ahead of time, because right now it's the quiet time of the year. Or quieter, I'm looking at you, guy who messaged me today, um, and I could be gone from home for months at a time doing work stuff, which is a bit of a pain. But, um, and also I might get a brush in. But right now I'm feeling alright. So, yeah. Garment, spading your animals. I'll figure something out, maybe. It's like, do I cut it off here and switch to an entire new visual novel? Or do I just leave it as... Or do I just, like, start a new one and add on things as, like, new Dawn courses come out? I don't know. Maybe. I have to see. Don't think about it. And until next time, I'll say, Me. Game of Six of Maybe Dawn Course. 
We'll definitely continue this at some point. Maybe next week. So thanks and see ya.